What's going on everybody? Welcome back to Red Dirt Aviation. Hope you guys have a fantastic day today. Today we have some breaking news for you guys in aviation news land. I really hope you guys are excited for today's video. Was not expecting this whatsoever, but what can I say? This is the day and age we live in and we have some breaking news in aviation news today. Welcome back to the channel everybody. Hope you guys have a fantastic day. Very, very, very crazy announcement that we just had or that happened earlier today. Uh, just got back from school. Excited to make this video. We got a lot of things to talk about, so I hope you guys are excited for it but without any further delay everybody here we go so this morning when i woke up saw a lot of spam uh from multiple social media platforms i was wondering what the heck was going on and once i logged in i figured out that spirit and frontier are planning to merge wow spirit airlines and frontier airlines are planning to merge and become one mega ulcc ultra low cost carrier Unbelievable news. There's a lot that goes into the context of this. Um, this is still not even approved yet, so this may not even happen, but there's a lot that's gonna be coming into this. So I have a few articles here and some different graphs, and I have a lot of things that I wanna talk about. So I also want to apologize that this seems a little all over the place. This is brand, this is news. I mean, we haven't had a merger in a long time this big. I think Virgin America, Alaska would be the similar counterpart, which was all the way back in November, 2016. So absolutely crazy that we're here today, guys. But yes, yeah, Spirit Airlines and Frontier are planning to merge. Unbelievable news, in my opinion. I was not expecting this. I don't think anybody was. Um, obviously, Spirit Airlines and Frontier Airlines, two huge low-cost carriers in the United States. Uh, Frontier being the more uh, younger one, if you will. Spirit's been around for a good period of time and has went through some different phases of their, uh, you know, their format and how they do things. Frontiers had a very interesting history as well. Um, you guys probably know the basics of that. If you guys want to go look online about it, you're more than welcome to. But the news is what we're here for today, guys. Absolutely crazy. I'll leave some of my tip hits for the uh, end, but I'm going to go into just mainly the full context of what's going on with this situation, guys. So here we go with Simple Flying. I think they do a good job. So we got Simple Flying here for this article today. Here we go. By Tom Boone, it says, Huge Spirit and Frontier to merge, creating a mega ULCC. The pairing will create the America's most competitive ultra low cost airline. Like I said by Tom Boone, this was posted uh, a few hours ago earlier this morning. So here we go. Oh boy. All right. Today, Frontier Airlines and Spirit Airlines revealed that they would be merging to create a single airline entirely. According to the airlines, the pairing would mean that $1 billion worth of savings for future passengers. The new airlines would remain under the Indigo partner umbrella where Frontier sits today. So that's pretty much the parent company. It's like Gemini Jets and ITA. If you guys know uh, that situation, IDA, something along those lines. But everybody has parent companies for the most part. And that's Frontiers is the um, Indigo partners group. The merging of Frontier and Spirit Airlines will likely cause a huge heat wave across the US airline industry. The airlines will go from competing against one another to sharing each other's potential passengers. The great offering will likely be seen as a win for many who fly the airline, uh, one airline or the other, which is definitely a valid point. And yes, um, we're gonna talk about this a little bit more in depth, but this merger logistically makes a ton of sense. And I definitely see where that remark is coming from indeed. So here's how the new airline would work. New airline will see Spirit or Frontier and Spirit Airlines become one. Frontier's equity holders own around 51 points. 5% of the new venture while Spears and Coles hold about only approximately 48.5. So fairly even situation here. Bill Frankie is the manager partner of Indigo Partners, Frontier's largest shareholder. He will go on the chairman of the board for the new airline. The board will have 12 members, seven from Frontier and five from Spirit. So again, slightly larger in favor of F9. Um, and then they have a cool picture here of the Inigo group that includes Volaris, Wizz Air, Frontier, JetSmart, International Group, of course. I'm not the most familiar with that. If you are, drop a comment. I would love to hear about them. But uh, here we go. If you are combined the available seats for both airlines in 2021, the dual airline would have been large in JetBlue and Alaska Airlines, which is a lot because both those airlines are huge. Both were already larger than Allegiant. The deal is set to be closed in the second half of 2022 or this year, assuming that everything goes to plan. The airline's new name, brand, and headquarters will be announced the day before the deal is closed, though the airline declines to comment on this today. Commenting on the plan, Spirit President and CEO Ted uh, Christian said, commented, this transaction is centered around creating an aggressive ultra low cost competitor to serve our guests even better. Expanding carrier, expansion, 
expand carrier opportunities, excuse me, for the team members and increase competitive pressure, resulting in more customer friendly fares for the flying public. We look forward to uniting our talents through the shakeup of the airline industry while continuing our new commitment to excellent guest service, uh, which is a very respectable comment. And I definitely think that he, uh, those guys got a really good idea of what's going on here indeed. Um, a huge new offering. The merger of the two airlines will create even more possibilities for passengers. While there's a fair, a, a few fair airports that both Frontier and Spirit have, there's also a good portion that only has one or the other serving them at present. For Frontier, this is focused across the continental United or conjugates United States Army, while Spirit's unique airports are primarily on the East Coast and in Central and South America. This graph is big right here, boys. Let's take a look at this graph for a moment. So this is an overview of some of the destinations or I think it's all of them, but this is the lineup here of all the destinations that either both of them serve, Frontier serves, or Spirit serves. And this graph is a very interesting uh, retrospective of what the situation is. Now, beginning with, um, as you can see, first and foremost, there is a lot of mutual destinations between these two. Uh, mainly big airports, Dallas, Phoenix, Las Vegas, Sacramento, um, Los Angeles, San Diego, all the new, lots of New York airports, Detroit, Chicago, Seattle, Portland, Orlando, Miami, big lineup of airports to say the least. Then you're gonna find Frontier's graph, which is very interesting to see all the airports that they only serve. Uh, you'll find a lot of airports in the West United States, Albuquerque, Grand Junction, Salt Lake City. Um, I think Spirit's about to start flying there though, ironically. Uh, you know, uh, Bosman, Montana, I think that may be Spokane, but I can't see. And Washington, there's another city over there. Uh, Reno, Nevada, of course, big lineup of cities. However, in the East United States, you'll find that Spirit has a ton of cities that they only serve too. Uh, all of these cities, uh, lots of these are smaller, like um, I think Akron, Ohio is one of them. Uh, that place in West Virginia, not sure what city it is. Um, there's one uh, kind of close to Charlotte, North Carolina, Atlantic City, I think Frontier does, but uh, there's one up there in uh, Vermont that they serve as well, and then in Fort Lauderdale. But you're gonna notice with Spirit, there's a ton of destinations to make up for this lack of cities in the West Coast, in Central America and uh, South America, which is included but not limited to all these cities throughout here. Uh, I think this is Puerto Rico, I'm not completely sure. Don't quote me on that. I'm not the best with uh, out of US geography. And then here's a bunch of cities down here in the Bogota's around here. I'm not sure what city, what country this is. Um, you know what, just for a retrospective, let's take a look. Okay, so it appears to be that that's in the area of Puerto Rico, which is one of them, but the Dominican Republic, Haiti, and then of course, uh, Colombia in that area is where you're gonna be seeing a lot of those. So very, very cool to see all these routes. And I really feel like, mm, I mean, we'll talk about it here in more in a moment, but for, but the fin we'll finish the article first, but there's a lot to that, that is incredible. According to the websites to set up the merger, the new, the new Mega LUC airline will offer 1,000 plus daily flights to 145 plus destinations. Serving 19 countries with 283 aircraft, the airline will provide more than 650 nonstop routes. Giving outstanding aircraft orders, the, seat, the fleet size is set to balloon, pardon me, to more than 350 aircraft next year and almost 500 aircraft in 2026. Wow. So that is, um, there is a deep dive article. So I just found this deep dive article and there's a lot of good stuff in here. So we are gonna review this. This video will be a little bit longer, but there's a lot of good stuff in here. And this is really gonna take us into deep dive. This was posted shortly after that first article. That first article kind of gave all the details. This is gonna go into the logistics and this is gonna go and back up a lot of my points that I was gonna mention anyways. So let's dive into the deep dive article inside the Frontier Spirit merger and strategy. So as Frontier and Spirit chart a path forward in the merger, the two airlines will already reveal how much they are thinking about the strategy and just first off before i've not even looked at this or that previous one i'm just going i literally just got back from school i'm assuming they're going to talk about a lot of logistical purposes that are going to make this merger great if it is able to happen which is uh includes but is not limited to the following so first and foremost the fleets are super similar both of them are all airbus fleets of course uh both of them have uh, did have A319s, kind of still do. All of them do have A320s and A320neos, a ton of them. 
and Spirit has a ton of orders for Neos. Along with that, there are A321s, and then Frontier has a boatload of orders for A321 Neos, and I believe XLRs as well. So that's one big purpose, and then along with that, just crew familiarity, hubs, networks, all that fun stuff. But we're gonna let the article do the talking because I'm sure the article is probably gonna have more details about this. So here we go, boys. Frontier Airlines and Spirit Airlines announced earlier today that they plan to merge to create the lo largest low cost carry, ultra low cost carry ULCC in the United States. While the two airlines have not revealed which brand will survive, where the headquarters will be, or who the final CEO will be, the carriers have started to reveal the strategy and plan moving forward to what a combined airline will look like. In short, growth is at the front of the strategy and will likely be a significant part of the argument the airlines make towards the US gov government for merger approval. So, as they just said right there, that's a big part of this whole situation why I said it may not happen. Of course, the U.S. government has to approve a merger to happen. That goes with probably almost any corporation for the most part. I'm not a logistics expert in that regard, but I'm, I'm assuming that's a good part of this. So there's obviously going to be a lot of details that are going to have to go through to make this happen. So Frontier and Spirit have fleet growth in the plans. The two airlines are, chart are charting growth with a combined order book, uh, order book, Book. Yeah, that's how, okay, that just looked weird. But order book over 350 aircraft. The airlines released the following charts depicting the future aircraft deliveries. So this is what I was getting with with the fleet orientation. This isn't necessarily what I was saying, but they do also have a huge combined um, f growth plan in place for both airlines. Like I was saying, Frontier has a bunch of orders for A321 Neos and XLRs, I believe, while Spirit has a bunch of orders for the A319 Neo, and I think they may have some Neos or XLRs or something like that on order as well, and all of those A320 Neos. But here it is, 2021, 283, 2022 already up to 321, 200, 2023 up to 365, 2024 up to 406, 2025 up to 440, and 2026 up to 493. That is a 12% increase rate, which is huge. And that's one argument that they're definitely gonna go hard on for the US government to approve this because, you know, growth is amazing. And with everything going on right now, all these airlines are trying to do is to make it happen in one way or another and i do think these grow the growth is going to be incredible by the end of 2026 the airline is a, the airline expects to fly 493 aircraft the largest majority will be the brand new airbus a321 neo family both frontier and spirit fly airbus narrowbody aircraft giving a fleet related screen I, I don't know how to say that but with the merger by 2026, the combined airline will increase by roughly 75%. The two airlines have indicated that they are looking to use this fleet to expand ultra low cost offerings across the US and provide an efficient ULCC challenge for the big four US airlines, which are mentioning American Airlines, Delta Airlines, United Airlines, and Southwest Airlines. Um, and that's exactly what I was getting at with the fleet similarities between these two. These airlines have fly the Airbus narrowbody family, which the amount of logistical issues that eliminates through a merger is incredible. We're gonna take a look at the uh, one of the previous big mergers, the latest one I believe, which was US Air, or I'm sorry, Virgin America and um, uh, Alaska Airlines. These airlines didn't necessarily have the closest logistical standpoint, but it was still close enough to where it turned out to work well. Alaska was an all Boeing fleet at the time with 737 aircraft, and Virgin America had an all Airbus fleet, which included the A319, A320, and A321, and the NIA was inbound as well. Alaska integrated these assets into their uh, fleet network, and they utilized them very well. And another good part about that merger as well is the networks were in a really good state. Uh, Alaska having the Seattle and Portland areas locked up, while uh, Virgin America had California absolutely killing, uh, killing it with um, San Francisco and Los Angeles. And both airlines were kind of focused in that, I don't want to use the terminology transcontinental network because Alaska especially was more like, you know, Dallas, New Orleans, Albuquerque, Reno, that sort of thing. However, there was still a ton of similarities between two airlines. Like uh, their product that they served was really similar, uh, you know, uh, what their intents were. I mean, it was very similar to see. With this, this makes it even more simple because not only are both these carriers ultra low cost carriers and are looking to give their customers solid deals on whatever you wanna call the product, we're not gonna get into that right now. But like I said, all these guys, or both these guys have Airbus A320 family aircraft, which makes it so simple. Cruise, um, cruise maintenance, uh, equipment, everything that these guys are gonna need is gonna be the same, which is incredible that they're gonna be able to do that. 
Uh, you're not gonna find that too often throughout uh, situations like this. Sure, you may find here and there where, um, for instance, like um, just thinking of one off the top of my head, um, Delta and United maybe, but I mean, it's just for this situation particularly, this is just amazing on paper and it'll probably go more into depth about that as well. But the amount of logistical issues that are gonna be eliminated, that are eliminated because of how similar these two airlines are and it's incredible. And then the seats I think are the exact same. I think I saw that as well, which is incredible. And uh, we'll talk about that more in depth at the end, but for the moment, let's keep diving into the article. At the end of 2022, the two airlines combined expect NEO plans to make 51% of their fleet. By, two by 2026, excuse me, I apologize. That number is expected to hit 79%, giving the airline a combined average fleet age, benefiting as well as a tailwind fuel efficiency, which should also help unlock more flying. And the Airbus A320neo, absolutely incredible aircraft family. I mean, these aircraft can fly I think it's like something like 3,000, 3,500 miles, which is absolutely amazing. And complimenting that, they're super efficient. I think their cabins for the most part are really good. I don't know if it's the best way how these airlines are utilizing it, but they are getting the most passengers they can on board, which is something. Um, and they're just great aircraft. They're young aircraft. They don't have too many maintenance issues. The 737 MAX is a whole different can of worms. Uh, so it's really cool to see um, how similar this is, and we'll talk about it more in depth, but yes. Two strategies thus far. Spirit and Frontier have two different strategies. The former operates most of its flights with the, and they're talking about Spirit, by the way, for the former, operates most of its flights with daily or more services, simulating demand for low fares, and most of the time going head to head with other major airlines. The latter, which would be Frontier, prefers the operating peak day flying just a few frequencies per week, connecting many smaller communities across the US to major leisure market destinations. So yes, that is the main part of their networks that are different. Yes, they have the same product, but like uh, Simple Flying said here in the deep dive, Spirit's more about, okay, let's get as many frequencies as we can. For instance, like Dallas to Orlando, that's a three daily flight usually for Spirit. That's a lot of frequencies to get a lot of people bo booming through these big places. However, you got Frontier, for instance, that flies, they fly to an airport as small as Branson, Missouri. If you guys know Branson, Missouri, they are the only airline there, but for a more retrospective example, Places like Tulsa, uh, Albuquerque, places like that, that they fly up to Denver um, on a two, three weekly uh, schedule, which yes, it's different, but I feel like these two formats combined could be big if it's done properly. Let's see what Simple Flying had to say about the rest, more about it. The two airlines are also broadly uh, complementary. Frontier has heavy exposure in the Western United States where it's established where it has established routes as we looked at. In contrast, Spirit has the, has orientated most of its network around the Eastern United States with some inroads into the West, which is like LA, Las Vegas, San Francisco, that sort of thing. There are some routes where both airlines compete directly against each other. Uh, for example, like I think Dallas to Chicago would be one, Orlando, uh, Dallas is another, um, probably, you know, um, Mm, I'm just trying to think of another one just to give you guys some examples. Probably LaGuardia to uh, Orlando and different things like that. <clears throat> Though it is a relatively smaller part of both carriers' networks. And that's why I was saying, you guys saw me, I, didn't even, I wasn't even able to come up with uh, enough examples off the top of my head. However, Florida market is where the two airlines have the deepest degree of overlap. Miami and Orlando are two big markets of overlap, but both airlines have indicated that are, they are consist, considering scheduled depth as part of the combined plans. So here is a graphic that has um, just the combined situation, uh, the route frequencies. So in, for instance, Baltimore to Orlando has nine flights between the two, or I'm sorry, the big four, that would be American Delta Southwest United. They have nine flights combined, and then Frontier has two daily flights, and um, Spirit has three daily flights, which would make five. So that already, I mean, I think you guys kind of see what's going on here. Dallas to Las Vegas, the big four have 10, which most of those are American, but Frontier has two, Spirit has three, that's another five. 
Denver, Las Vegas is another great example. 14 flights, Southwest probably has most of them. Frontier has four, Spirit has two, that would make six. Chicago to uh, Fort Myers or Southwest Florida International Airport, 23 flights, that is impressive. One flight for Frontier, four flights for Spirit, that would make five. So both Frontier and Spirit are looking at the goals of depth in their networks, and this photo is from a presentation. Um, and there's a lot of great stuff on the internet about this. I immediately got emails once I subscribed a couple of weeks ago to Frontier and Spirit's newsletters. So I really appreciate them informing me of the full details. Their Spirit, or I'm sorry, yes, Spirit, I believe sent out a hundred paper PDF of the full details, which I don't even know if I have time to read through that. It's definitely not gonna be in this video, but what I'm getting at is it's really cool to see that these airlines are giving details for anybody that's interested. Often overlooked as aircraft utilization, the combined airlines are expecting to look at ways to increase existing aircraft orient, uh, utilization to add more growth. Ted Christian, Spirit CEO, stated the following at a, pres uh, a presentation to interviewers. On the complementary network side, we're, what we're doing is really, we believe, as the companies combine, finding ways to create utilization on the existing fleet, which is going to drive tremendous benefits to the P&L. I'm not sure exactly what P&L is. I may look that up, but that's very interesting. And more importantly, drive a lot of benefits to consumers, which is definitely the goal here, obviously. This covers things like scheduling an aircraft to fly more hours in the day, adding new short haul markets to the end and start of the day to keep aircraft schedules filled, and adding more frequencies on existing routes. After the merger closes, the network team will be busy through those, but the two airlines broadly want to find ways to be relevant to more consumers and grow their markets which they benefit and will believe benefit the bottom line and this is the part where the government's i don't know if it's going to talk about i did see um something down there towards the end but this is going to be the problem for the government the government does not want to see monopolies in the u.s aviation market that's why they're trying to shut down the northeast alliance between JetBlue and american um that's kind of a thing to where it it I see where they're coming from, and I'm not going to uh, get political on it by any means, but it appears to be that some parts of that is good and some aren't. Again, I'm not an expert by any means. I'm just here to analyze what's going on. Uh, but I do think, you know, if they are able to merge, of course, the, they'll turn into an awesome, um, I think what they'll be able to do with the networks and overlapping routes and stuff will be really cool. But more details to come on that. Some hurdles left. Here's probably where it's going to dive into it. There are some hurdles left the airlines have to go through. The biggest is the regulatory approval. Barry Brufflitz, Frontier CEO, stated the following in the presentation regarding uh, regulatory approval. We've reached out to the administration and we're excited to tell them about our story. I mean, this merger is completely different than any other merger in the past in the U.S., which is very true, and we'll talk about that. Uh, this is not about reducing competition and raising fares. This is about getting more fares lower to the people in more places. And we're excited to tell our story about them and I think they'll be well received. That statement right there, I believe they're probably talking about the Biden administration. Again, we're not going to get political on it here. Just for, for the sake of what we're doing in terms of talking about the merger from both sides of the spectrum. They have a very solid point here in terms of saying that this is more beneficial than what other airlines have done in the past. Um, this is not, they're not necessarily trying to make a monopoly, but they're trying to help the consumers. And that was obviously intended by Spirit CEO, what they just said. And of course, Frontier CEO, which would be, um, was it Billy, I believe? I'm sorry, Bufflet, that's however you say that, Barry Bufflet. Um, as you can tell, they're trying to do good for the, um, good for what's it called good for the consumers and again not to get political on it we're just looking at it from both sides of the spectrum however let's see what the rest of this has to say before we make any remarks to the contrary argument the Biden administration has took a stand on competition in the airline industry to that extent is even pursuing a lawsuit against the american JetBlue northeast lines which was what i was talking about uh you guys clip that hyperlink if you're interested to look at that it's on the article I'll link in the description which the department of transportation which has died if you guys hear me ever uh, mentioned dot that's who it is department of transportation has already approved it remains unclear the administration's stance on the frontier spirit merger but it will certainly take time to review and decide what it wants to see happen much of timing and decision on this remains out of control of the airlines and um, that is a very respectable way to say it um, we're, it's going to be interesting to see what they say again if it doesn't happen doesn't happen this is not to get political i think you know it would be 
cool either way to see the mergers, the merger. I love both airlines and I'm not gonna complain if they're both still flying, but I do think it would be pretty neat if they do combine into one airline. So again, I have a neutral standpoint. As long as you guys don't get political in the comment section, you guys are welcome to say anything you'd like about that as well within reason. So that's kind of my opinion on it, but it's gonna be very interesting regardless. I think we can all agree on that. Two more paragraphs here. Then the other challenges in a merger. This includes the it inner scratcher, setting up a new headquarters, finding out maintenance teams, streamlining processes, and working with labor unions. According to the executives from both airlines, unions were notified Monday and there will be, need to be some negotiations. There are plenty of unanswered questions about the merger. However, the two airlines are planning to close the deal by the end of the year, which is ambitious uh, timeline, but so far the airlines expressing confidence in their ability to succeed well done by simple flying with both those articles that one went more into the logistics side of things and they didn't quite go as far into the fleet side as what i was planning to which we'll do a little bit here for a moment but yes again in the most respectful way possible not trying to offend anybody or anything like that really eager to see what happens with what's going on in this merger the final thing that I wanted to do was dive into some of the wiki articles just to show you guys how similar the airlines are. Uh, some of these charts, including that uh, combined fleet plan, really demonstrated, and also the uh, route overlap as well, really demonstrated what I was gonna get at. But we do have a couple graphs. Here's the business trends for Frontier over the last 10 years or so. They're very comparable to Spirit, which will be coming on the screen as well. Um, just from looking at the numbers themselves we don't have all of them but they look kind of similar for the most part just from looking at this um load factors are very similar as well which is really nice to see spirits a little bit on the lower side um along with that you can see that both airlines have been progressively growing and are going to grow substantially um in the coming years by the number of mainline aircraft that both charts represent um hopefully they're both on the screen so you guys can see what i'm getting at and then, uh, you know, numbers of employees also coming up as well, which is very noticeable. And then number of passengers, which are, you know, Spirit owns that, but then their load factor is a little bit lower. So you could say that Frontier has been a little bit more efficient. And you also have to keep in mind, these are impressive numbers for Frontier considering their frequencies on most of the routes. Spirit has multi-daily frequencies on a lot of their destinations. And it's really impressive to see how good the airlines have been doing. And also the numbers for Spirit are not quite as in-depth as Frontier's, but yes. Um, diving into this a little bit before we move on to my next point that I wanted to make, uh, again, this just shows the logistics of how good this, uh, how, how, you know, how much overlap there is between these two companies. Their revenue is probably fairly, did Frontier have revenue? All right. Okay. Yes. The revenue between the airlines is pretty similar or proportionally it's very similar if you look at it from that perspective okay frontier only has this many flights a week and spirit has this many very proportionally similar in all these numbers yes you'll see spirits are higher but you have to keep in mind spirit has much more flights than what frontier does on most of the, in most circumstances so Overall, from a logistics standpoint, it just looks so similar on paper and it makes sense for them to combine. Um, now, both these airlines, just going into a little bit of the history, have had differences. Frontier, of course, had the, um, you know, back in the late 2000s and 2009 10 land when they ended up having to pull out of a lot of cities, unfortunately, due to a variety of reasons. They also had all these different subsidiaries as well in the name branding and everything. Um, so there was a lot to that. They also have had controversy in the past, according to this wiki article. I'm not sure the full in depth about this, but yes, there was a lot to it to say the least. Um, and Spirit, on the other hand, you know, they've had their fair share of problems as well. They've had some dot files, it looks like, back in the early 2010s. Um, and I'm sure there's more details throughout here. If you want to take a look at the wiki articles, feel free. I'm not the biggest expert on these, but yes, there's a lot to it. The next graph that I want to take a look at was their fleet, which really, I mean, yes, we talked about this, but let's just take a look at it side by side on paper. Uh, Frontier has 16 A320s, 74 A320 Neos with an additional 74 on order, which they still have a ton. I didn't realize it was that high through 2026. Uh, 21 A321s, which is a good number. 168 A321 Neos with options to convert 18 of those to A320 Neo, or with options to convert 18 A320 Neo orders to XLRs, and they are not sure what they're gonna do yet, which is incredible. They've also had a history of having Airbus aircraft and some different ones uh, through their 
time as air, as an airline, they've had different things. A318, they've had A319s they had a lot of, 737 Classics they had, Ember 170s and 90s, Q400, CRG 700s and 900s. While Spirit, on the other hand, 31 A319s, 31 A320 Neos, uh, A319 Neos, I'm sorry, they'll be the first in the US to operate, which is really cool. 64 A320s, 53 A320 Neos with an additional 75 on order, 30 A320s, and 26 A321 Neo orders. And they've had McDonald Double aircraft in the past, which you know I'm loving it, but included but not limited to the DC-921, 31, 32, 41, MD-81, MD-82, MD-83, and the MD-87, and not limited to, uh, That's that was their whole fleet. So that was what I wanted to dive into today, guys. I didn't think this was going to be as long as what it turned out to be, but there's a lot of context to this situation. There's some great articles. I had a points guy one pulled up. I was going to dive into it, but I'm sure it's probably those two uh, articles combined pretty much. There's some good stuff, and I'm really eager to see what's going to come of the merger if it does happen. This is a progressing story, so we're not going to have more details on it for probably the rest of the year so this isn't going to happen overnight like alaska virgin america did i'm pretty sure that one was uh approved before it got announced again i'm not completely sure I, that's just what i remember i'm pretty sure but let me know what you guys think about everything that's going on in the comments section i really want to hear you guys' thoughts it's going to be really interesting it does make logistical sense on paper it really is just going to come down to if it gets approved and if it does what's going to end up happening but really eager to see it um, definitely a breaking news story and I'm really eager to see what's going to happen but you can kind of use the Tom Brady equivalent is okay even though he didn't announce it himself which this is a little different but what I'm getting at is most of the time if something makes it this far it's probably going to happen um, just from what I've noticed like Tom Brady even though he didn't announce it himself which is kind of the equivalent of the US government approving this if it's made it this far to the public, it's probably gonna happen. He did end up retiring. This is kind of how I think this will go. But again, I'm not an expert by any means. I'm just here to analyze aviation news and share my passion with you guys. So let me know what you guys think about it in the comment section. I'm gonna be eager to hear, but hopefully you guys learned something in this video. Let me know what you guys think about this potential upcoming merger and let me know in the comments. Do you think it will happen? Uh, as long as you guys uh, would please not get political, I'd appreciate that and be respectful to each other, but feel free to have conversations. Let's do it. But with all that being said, everybody, I wanna thank you guys so much for watching this video. I really appreciate it. Uh, so. Yes, um, really eager to see what happens and it's gonna be absolutely insane. So uh, thank you guys so much for watching. My name is Red River Aviation. I'd like to thank you guys so much for watching. Take it easy, everybody. Stay safe, just process. Do what you love and love what you do. My name is Red River Aviation. I wanna thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you guys soon as Red River Aviation is signing off.